Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we'll be looking at the card browser. Now, the card browser is a really interesting visual. Uh, the name card here, as you can tell by the preview on the right hand side, it's kind of like uh, the idea of a baseball card or a football card that you might collect, uh, where you can have an image up at the top, and then you can have some details on the front about the individual person or record that you're trying to show. And then you can actually flip the card to the back side and see maybe some more statistical information about that individual. Now, I keep using the word individual, but this is really a way to browse documents. So if you have a lot of kind of documentation that you want to display or document data that you want to display, then you can do that with the card browser, and it makes it a nice, easy way to kind of navigate through that data. Now, it does allow you to render a headline image up at the top. We've already mentioned that. And uh, that headline image is, is viewable on this double-sided card. So you can actually flip the card to the other side and see more detailed data. And you can see the headline image on the other side as well. This one is developed by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and walk you through how you can use the card browser. All right, so to get started, as always, we need to bring in our data. So we're going to go up to the Get Data section here. And we're going to pull in from Excel. We're going to be pulling in a data set that has Pragmatic Works employees. And so you can see some information about a few of our uh, employees. So I'm going to go ahead and select Excel here. And I'm going to go to our class files that have this spreadsheet or workbook uh, available to us. And it's called Pragmatic Works Employees.xlsx. I'll go ahead and open on that. And then there'll be a spreadsheet in here called Employees, which I'll go ahead and select. And you can see the kind of columns that we're going to be looking at. I have an identifying column here, just an ID column, which you do need some kind of identifier column. You'll see why here in a few moments. You also, I also have a number of years that the employees have been here, their name, what kind of color I want to associate with them, their title, whether or not they're a Microsoft MVP. I have a little badge that I'll describe what that is here in a few moments. And I have a bio and an image. So I'm going to go ahead and hit load to bring this data now into the Power BI desktop. And once this is loaded, you can see I have a few, quite a few fields on the right hand side. And we're ready to go ahead and bring in our card browser. So I'm going to go up to the custom visual section up in the top of the ribbon. And I'll tell it that I want to bring this in from the store. Now, when I select from store, I'll do a quick search for card and see if I can find it very easily that way. And you can see there's quite a few different card visuals, but the one that we want here is the one called card browser. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select add on that one. It's going to allow us to browse our document data that we have here. And I'll hit OK. Now we have the card browser showing up in the visualizations pane. I'm going to go ahead and bring this into our design surface. And I'm going to make it take up the entirety of the screen because there's quite a bit of uh, surface this can take up if we allow it. So I'm going to make it take up the entirety of the screen. Now, first things first, remember we mentioned these are going to allow us to visualize different documents that we have, document data that we have. And so you do need to have some kind of identifier for each of the documents. This does a couple things for it. One, it helps it uniquely identify each of the documents that you're trying to visualize. Uh, and by default, it actually sorts by this as well. You'll see that as we get going. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the ID column that I have into the document ID field here. For the title, I'm going to place in the first and last name of the individual. So I'll bring in the first name first. Okay, you can see that shows up here. And then if I bring in the last name, it actually shows that up right behind it. And you'll notice that it, it, uh, incidentally here, it put it underneath the, or accidentally, it put it underneath the preview section. I actually don't want that to be my preview. I'm going to bring up the last name into the title section. So I have first and last name showing up as the title. I'm actually going to skip the preview for this example because you'll see, I want to show you what happens when you don't use the preview. The preview is kind of a, a, a preview of what the document's going to show. You can have a smaller subset of the document displayed uh, on this front part of the card if you so choose. All right, now let's go a little bit down. You can see there's a content section. The content's going to be the main document data that you're going to be working with. In my case, it's going to be a bio. So I'm going to grab a bio here. And by the way, the bio is actually in HTML. And you'll see that it has HTML tags. If I were to go look at the data section here, you can see there's HTML tags built into the bio. But when you bring it onto the card browser, those HTML tags are not displayed. All right, so you don't have to have HTML tags, by the way. I just do for this scenario. So I have the bio in here as the content, then I have a title image URL. So this title image is what's going to appear up inside each of the cards. So if I want to display to my users an image for each of the individuals here, then I can bring in something like my image column as the title image. And that way I can see a picture of each of the individuals that we're looking at. So these are a bunch of Pragmatic Works employees that I'm visualizing here. The next thing I'd like to do is I'm going to bring in a subtitle field. And you can see there's a subtitle field right here. And the subtitle field I'm going to use is actually these individuals' titles within the company. 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drag in the title into the subtitle field section, and I can see the title for each of the individuals. Okay, so you can kind of see that appears in a smaller text below the title. You also have this idea of a badge. Now the badge actually shows up in the top right corner of each of the images up in the, or each of the cards in the top right. And so what I've done is I've actually pulled in a image for the badge. So this is another image URL that I have. And they're little icons. One's an MVP icon. So these will be my more technical people here. My four first users are going to be, or my first four, first four documents are going to be Microsoft MVPs. My other two are actually part of my sales team. And so what I've done is I've created this image. If I go find the badge and drop that into the badge section here, I've created these little badges that you can see, dollar sign next to the sales team, MVP logo next to my more technical staff, which all happen to be MVPs in this case. All right. So that's nice. It's a nice little way you can have a little identifier in the top right corner of your card browser. The other thing you can do is you can add some metadata fields. And the reason why you're going to want to add some metadata fields is because these are two-sided cards, or at least they will be once we add in some metadata. And so what I'd like to see on the metadata section of the back side of the cards is I want to see things like, of course, their first and last name again. So I'll bring first name and last name. And you'll notice as soon as I started to drag these into the metadata section that this appears right here. What happens is I can now flip the card back and forth between the front side and the back side to get more of the metadata view where I'm seeing more detailed information about the individuals. So let's add a little bit more to this. I have first and last name. Let's also bring in their title again. In addition to that, let's also bring in the number of years they've worked at the company. So I'll bring in years. We'll also bring in whether or not they're an MVP. And I think that's pretty good. We've got some good information here. So now when I flip back and forth, I should see whenever I flip over to the back side, I see their name, their title, the number of years at the company, and whether or not they're an MVP. So it's pretty good information here. I'm able to flip back and forth again. You can have some metrics in here if you wanted to. In fact, years here is considered a metric. It's a number value that's aggregated. In this case, I have it displayed per each individual document, so it's not really rolling up in any way. But I can flip back and forth between the two different views of the card, and it makes for a nice little interaction. The other thing you can do is you can actually select these values. So if I wanted to see the details of what's kind of falling off the screen, their bio information, I could select an individual. Say, for example, I, I selected uh, Tim Mulacare. And I can see below that it's actually created this nice little view of the document where I can see Tim's image up on the top. I can see his bio information fully spelled out. And by the way, you can have paragraphs and paragraphs of data and they would all show down here. And then I can see the other metadata information that we dropped in. You can also kind of tab back and forth between the other documents I have here. So if I went to the left, I can see Ryan Dowd and I can see Ryan Dowd's information with his image and his information. And so I can kind of tab back and forth between each of the individuals I have here. You can see a little indicator of where I'm actually at. You can use the arrows here to go right or left, or you can actually just click on the image that you would like to see instead. You can also do this from the backside view. If I go back to the other side, I can do the same thing here, and I can flip back and forth between the different images and the different cards. So that's kind of a nice little interaction that you have where you can get more detailed information about each employee in this case. Now under the format section, if we go under the format paintbrush, you have a few things that you can actually tweak on the card browser. So if I go underneath cards here, for example, I can turn on or off the shadow box that you see around the card. So you can see this little shadow showing up around the card. I can turn that off here. Okay, now you see there's no shadow appearing. There's no line around, no border around it. You can also add any kind of, kind of date formatting that you want, or you can add in separators. So there's a little indicator separator here between the values. You can turn off the uh, title image if you wanted to. Now, in this case, because we brought this in, whenever I select the title image, it's already kind of brought in through a URL, so it's not going to impact it here. You can also change the card width. So if I wanted to, I could make this where it's uh, 300 in width instead of 200 in width, and that just makes for a larger card. And as you select values here, you'll see the other values appear below. Okay, so it's kind of up to you how large or small you want it to be. I'm going to revert that back to the default, though. Underneath the render section, or the reader section, excuse me, Underneath the reader section, this affects anything that you see underneath when you select a value, this section here, this is the reader. So when you're looking at the reader section, you can change things like the header color. So the color that we're seeing right here, you can change that. So I can change this maybe to a yellow, something like that. So whenever I select it, I can see the yellow fade there instead of the, the dark, dark fade that we had a moment ago. And I can minimize this to send it back to where it was. Now, one other thing that I haven't done, you'll notice there's a field that I haven't used. This field actually can be used to put a nice little color above each of the cards. So if I went back over to my field list and scroll down to the bottom, there's a lot of fields here. There's a sorting field that we could enable. There's also a top bar color. And if I bring in this HTML color, it has to be an HTML value. You can see that it actually enables a color above each of our fields or each of our documents. 
And so you can actually still see that whenever you go into the reader view, you can see the uh, document color up at the top here as well, the top bar color. All right, back over to the format section. You can also change the size that's being used here in the reader section. So you have some ability to modify that if you'd like. Uh, underneath the flip state, here you can actually tell whether or not you want to have the ability to flip back and forth between the front and back side of the card. So I can turn that off if I don't want that. So here now I can't flip to the back side or the front side. It's always front side. And then if I want to see more detail, I can click on a value. I'm going to leave that on though. So I'll leave that on and then flip back and forth this way when I have that turned on. You also have the option here where you see card face to determine what is displayed. So say, for example, I decided I didn't want the ability to flip back and forth. Uh, you can decide what do you want the card face to be? Do you want it to be the preview side that we're looking at right now? Or do you want it to be the metadata side where we see kind of those details we saw earlier? Okay, and you can still, of course, always select them if you choose that option. I'm going to reset the default on that. I kind of like the way that it, it works by default. Now, there is some things built in to be able to handle large amounts of data or really to, to, to limit large amounts of data. And so what you can do is if you need to have more than a 500 document limit, as was really what's set here by default, if you want to go beyond that limit, you can kind of tweak that in here as well. So you can kind of turn on this feature and, and go beyond the uh, limit of 500 and that's in here by default. Now, in my case, I only have six values in here. But if you had a lot of documents that you were trying to bring in, let's say, for example, you're still even using this example of uh, visualizing employees, you could have obviously thousands of employees that you would want to use this for. And so you can actually uh, do some, some, some uh, filtering on that and uh, decide to have more, uh, kind of a load more option whenever you reach the certain limits that you have built in. So that's kind of a nice feature. You, I would obviously probably put this as a much lower, maybe uh, even 50 as the limit, and then kind of go where I can load and enable more if I needed to. All right. So that's really it for the card browser. It's a pretty nice little visual. There's a, quite a few different settings that you can kind of turn on and tweak. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one and look forward to showing you our next custom visual and our next module.